Good morning. It is June 4th, 2018. This morning, I'm going to be taking some softwood lilac cuttings. This is common lilac, at least I believe it is. Not 100% sure the variety was given to us. But the flowers are just finished blooming, so now's the right time to take the cuttings. Got a little bit of wiltage here, but I think that's from lack of rain. But I'll take the cuttings from right in here. So what I need is probably about, I think I'll take two dozen cuttings, somewhere around there. I need cuttings to replace the hardwood cuttings I attempted earlier this year. Those failed. I'll, I'll tell you why during this video. I know I could take suckers. I have a zillion suckers there, but I'm going to take cuttings to show you how to do the cuttings. I will probably pull out some suckers in another video, maybe this year, maybe next year. But for today, we'll do some softwood cuttings and get them going. They're going to go in a line right along. There's a road right there and then a new neighbor up there. Uh, these common lilac gets fairly tall, so I'm hoping to shield the view a little bit. So let's get started. Okay, my first step is to take this cheap aluminum, I don't know what the hell it's called, um, doesn't say, but I guess it's a baking slash warming whatever thing. I'm going to fill this with sand. The sand I have is just playbox sand. I got this from Menards. It's uh, a coarse sand, a mined sand, sharp sand, not beach sand. This got plenty of minerals and stuff, so um, I don't know if it's really necessary to use any fertilizer uh, to wet this, but I might do a weak, a real weak uh, starter fertilizer like I generally do. So I need to fill this with sand. I need holes in here. I need a something to catch the water that leaks out. You, you absolutely have to have holes and let the water leak out. And then I need something to cover it with. The cuttings will be poked into this and will be, you know, roughly six inches tall because that's the length of the cuttings I'm taking. So I need something to cover this, and I was thinking, see this doesn't quite fit. I'm a big fan of bins. A clear bin would work great because I could take it on and off if I want without much of a fuss. Um, other people use bags. Whatever it is, it has to be translucent. It doesn't need to be clear, but it needs to allow light in. So, I'm going to get started by filling this with sand. Sand. Ah, I already forgot to poke the holes. All right, I'm going to use a, a nail set. I don't need a shitload of them. I'm going to go with six. I think any more would completely destroy my piece of crap pan. There we go. And this 
will leak out. Once it's moistened, it will not leak out though. Some people would have put this on the tray before they filled it with sand, but that's not how I roll. We're going to do this bass backwards. I found this, I found this big ass blue bin. that I believe will do the trick. A little bit of spillage. There we go. That will work perfect. So now I'm gonna wet this down. I think I will use a, just a real mild, fertilized water. Um, what do I have here? I got this Walmart stuff that's uh, 153015. So if I use that at about a quarter strength, it'll be roughly the same as plant starter. You can use just plain water as well and it'll work. So There's a cat. Oh, get out of there, honey. No. No peeing in the... This is my lilac stuff. She's drinking my water, and she wants to pee in my bedding mix. Kitty, go. No helping. All right. Let's mix up some, uh, some juice to wet this, and then we'll go take the cuttings. Just gonna put a smidge. Just a tiny little bit. And I'm gonna put about a gallon of water in here. Of fertilizer. And just a, a wee drop of micronutrients. I almost got it in my coffee. Holy crap. Oh, I got a mess. I'm going to go fill this with water. And I'm going to clean that up. about right. When I poke the holes in there, I should be able to tell if it's uh, if it's moist all the way to the bottom or not. Well, let's grab that. Yes, it is moist all the way to the bottom. All right, here are my Felco pruning shears. They are the best. And there's that mess I said I would clean up. It's all on here, too. I'll get to it. Okay, let's go get some cuttings. Okay, over to the bush. And... I hope I have this aiming the right way. Let me... Okay, time for some cuttings. 
I'm sure the professionals are much quicker at this, but I am absolutely not a professional. I haven't even been counting. I got probably six. Hopefully, this is on camera. All right, take a few more. And that should do it. Now, I gotta strip some leaves off these and get them into the water. Now, what I gotta do is clean a, clean a little spot for me to work. I only need, oh, I'm gonna say four leaves at the top. So, I'm going to strip some off. I could probably get away with two leaves. And some of these are a little too long. I will trim them down as I put them in the rooting hormone. This is not my preferred method because I'm in a northern climate. It's, we have pretty cold weather here. So if you wait until this is, well, it's fairly early June. It's June 4th, but this can take six weeks or more for this to root. And then it, you know, then it has tiny little roots. That takes me into July before I can get this stuff planted. So I would have to keep watering this pretty much the rest of the year. If I take cuttings in January, like I do with the grapevines, I would have, you know, large plants. These would already be grown, be fully rooted, and be growing new growth by this time. And would be much easier to take care of. A few waterings, and they would be just fine. They would be well along their way. So by winter time, I would have some pretty big plants instead of tiny little things like these will be. Okay, I get rid of this. I have take root rooting compound, which is, uh, what is that, butyric acid, and the rest is pretty much, I believe it's talc. So I got the wetted vines or vines. I'm, I'm really used to doing grapes. By the way, my first, my attempt at rooting the hardwood cuttings earlier this year failed because I took the cuttings after they were already starting to bud out. It was way too late in the year. I should have taken them at the same time as I took the grapevines in January or February, but I waited way too long and they were already budding. Where is... I'm looking for something. I guess I can use this nail set. So, 
I'm just going to poke a few holes, a few inches from each other. I don't want to jam these in and wipe off all the rooting hormone. Although, with or without the rooting hormone, they should root. Lilac is, is fairly easy to propagate, especially this way. I think the only reason you would really want to do it from a hardwood cutting in the winter is if you're in a colder climate like this and you need to have it much further along the way when summer starts. All right, that's probably about the right length right there. Yeah, about six inches. That's all you really need. Four to six inches, really. These are a little bit on the long side. And let me turn this so you can see. There are my holes. Not quite sure how many I how many I cut. So I'm gonna go over this side and then work my way towards the center. I don't want to crowd them for no reason. You have to have at least one node below the sand. These are the nodes. Got one, two, three, four nodes on there. The nodes are where the roots will grow from. <clears throat> if this one fails as well, I will be so pissed. But I am going to do the hardwood cutting technique again, just like the vines, because it will work. Or at least I really, really believe it will. And I really want it to, because I need, I need vines that are much further, or vines, I keep calling them vines, I need plants that are much further along by summertime than these will be. But I'll plant these regardless. They'll be tiny little things, but I'll plant them, you know, the end of July or whenever they whenever they're ready. Okay, what do I got left? One, two, three, four, five. So I'll just try to space them out in there. Yeah, this is a really nice one. Got three, three nodes on there. Nice short length. One of the key things to this is to keep them moist. Keep it nice and humid around them. I like doing the bin method for hardwood cuttings because it's 100% humidity in the bin and they're not going to dry out. If they dry out, that's it. Over. Uh, we'll go down there. What do I got? I got two left.
I'm not real sure. I believe this works about the same for any any bush. You know, use this year's growth, new growth, and do it roughly the same way, and you should be successful. Like I said before, lilac is real easy. Some some plants are not so easy. So again, we'll do the we'll do the hardwood version again, and I'll take the cuttings right at the same time as the grapes. Uh, I generally do it in mid February. You got to do it when they're completely dormant. And the earlier ones I did of the lilacs, they were already budded out. They were ready to open, and what they did was they opened leaves before roots. And all they have is the limited energy that's in the, the hardwood cutting, and it used up all that energy to maintain the leaves and did not create roots. So that was a, a total failure. But the vines did fantastic. And I will show them at the very end of this video. So now I need to cover this. I need to either tent something over the top or put some standoffs in here and put it in a translucent bag so I'll have to go find something to do that. I'm not super prepared. Okay, I moved the oaks out of the way. Those need to be planted today. And I'm going to give them a little spritz. As well as give the area a spritz. I'm not sure if I can get the humidity high enough with the cover I found for this. It's I'm going to use the cover that I had for the for the oaks, this big monster. Problem is it's so tall. I don't know. It worked on the oaks just fine, but those were growing from seed. Um, this is a, a whole nother thing. So what I'm going to do is grab the humidistat. I have a thermometer and humidistat in the old sawhorse greenhouse that is going to be taken down today. I'll pull that out and put it in here so I can see what the, what the temperature and humidity is in there. And if need be, I will make this smaller by putting some standoffs in the corners and then sliding this into a, like a white um, bag or something like that, like a kitchen trash bag would work. Yeah, if this was about that high, roughly half the height, I would like it a lot better. But we'll give her a try, see what happens. The worst that can happen is that they all die and I have to do it again. Okay, that's it for this. Well, that'll wrap up this uh, lilac propagation video. I will get back to this fairly regularly and show the progress on it. Yeah, that's why it's nice having a, a clear bin like that. Because you can just look and see what's going on there. So, I'll stop back regularly and give you an update on the progress. And hopefully you'll see these planted right along that line where the road is, right there. I have a new lilac up that way if you can see that far but I want them all along here to block the neighbor who 
is right there. We were out in the middle of nowhere forever, and then all of a sudden a neighbor plops his house facing directly at us. Oh well. So, stop back often and check on the progress, and remember to subscribe and click the update icon, which is a little bell. That way you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.